Oh, mate. You can see I'm grunting. And, oh, I'm grunting. And grunting? Oh. Oh. And they just fight well above their weight. Oh, what a beautiful fish. is this school holidays kids families everywhere fishing that is what life is all about i'm very very excited just a 100 meter walk from the beautiful all season salamander shores i'm actually catching up with a very good mate of mine we're at port stevens and just for a change i'm going fishing brent g'day paul good to see you my friend let's go fishing who's this bloke that's rowan yeah, I thought we had a Suzuki, but we're rolling. Let's go, mate. OK. Well, the good thing about fishing inside at Port Stephens, Brent, is you don't have to go too far to catch a fish, do you? No, mate. Just five minutes from the bay ramp, and hopefully, there should be a big flathead around, mate. I don't have hope. I have no. I know we'll catch a fish. Now, last time I was, oh, last time I was here, Brent, we fished for flathead, and you were working the real estate game. Tell me about your change of life. <laughs> made a big change in life. Now I'm actually, uh, well, I've opened Tackle World Port Stevens, and to be honest, mate, it's the best thing I've ever done. You know what? That's a feel good story. You know why? Because <laughs> it makes you feel good. More about that later. Let's catch a fish. Fantastic, mate. Over the past decade, there has been a massive increase in a thing called reality television. Every time you turn the box on, there's some people who are just normal people and they're on TV. And I've got to say, I reckon I fish with Tackle World is as close to reality television as it gets. Because we don't have a script, we take people like Brent Fishing, who doesn't do TV, and we basically deal with whatever cards we are dealt. And today in Port Stephens, they haven't been very kind. There's no aces. We've got a falling barometer, the weather is very average, it looks like we've got some rain coming. But Brent, it is what it is, and whatever the people see today is exactly how this day will unfold. Mate, that's how it is, you can't change it. It's reality TV, as you said, and that's what it's gonna be. And the reality is, it's fairly cold, and I think I need a coffee. <laughs> Tough day here in Port Stephens. The wind is blowing at least 20 knots. But we're here fishing this rock wall, and the reason for it is its structure. Brim just love hiding in amongst the wash here, feeding on crabs, prawns, and small bait fish. What we're doing is throwing in our small plastics right in hard against that structure, letting them drift down, the brim come out, and bang, they eat our plastics. That feels brimish. Now, why does it feel brimish? Mate, because it is. Because a, it is. Oh, it's it is. a nice brim. It's a nice brim there. That's very nice. Good work. And you know what? The sun has come out. Ah, oh, finally. For your first fish of the day. Ah, oh, nice fish. That is very good, mate. I'll just grab the net. Slide your brim on up. Beautiful. Oh, that's good work. That is a very, very nice fish. That is a good fish. And. I reckon this fish has had somewhere in its life. We'll just see if I can grab him properly here. Stop flicking about. 
Somewhere in his life he's had a bit of a tangle with either a net or a bird. Mm. What do you reckon? Mate, it's hard to say with that big lump in his head there. You can see my finger can slot in there. Yep. No worries at all. But he's not a bad brim, actually. He's a beautiful fish. A yellowfin brim? Yellowfin brim, mate. That's uh, that's what we have here in Port Stephens, is yellowfin brim. So you don't get any southern black brim here? Mate, I haven't seen a black brim here in all the life, all the time I've lived here, so. Beautiful fish. You can tell it's a yellowfin brim by that massive anal spike down there. Look at that, huge anal spike. And there is a little bit of difference in the roundness of the head, but very hard to see when you haven't got the two fish to compare. Mm. Well done, mate. Through trying conditions, <laughs> Brent has come good. Thanks, Paul. Love your work. Well, they say the best time to catch a fish is within 10 minutes of having had caught a fish. And Brent is just letting his fish go. I've cast into the rocks, very first cast. How good is this? A beautiful fish. Look at that. Oh, you've got to love your brim fish when it works. And even in very, very trying conditions, there's still some nice fish to be had. And if you weren't filming, you'd probably just go home. You'd say, oh, it's all too hard. But this goes to show the fish are there. you just got to do the job and catch them. Now, if you can just throw me that net, my friend, thank you. I'll have to look after this one. Over right. you go, and that is yes. a corker. Whoops, bit of salt water. And that is gold. Look at that. The fishing is starting to come our way. Bit of weight there? Uh, what is it? Ah, it is a flathead. It's a little fella. Well, you said... Now, how's the colour of that? That is one light flathead, mate. Yeah, well, you can see the bottom, how yep. it's all sandy. And obviously the flatties are just laying in between the rock and the sand. He's only a little fella, but it's a flatty on a hard day. I must say, though, a tough day's fishing meant we got a little opportunity to go and have a cafe latte. <laughs> oh, I just, oh, I just got bit right there. Oh, really? Yeah, look at the scars on the bottom of his Yeah, guts. yeah. What's going on there? Don't know, mate. Is he being bitten by something? I reckon he has. Hard to say. Not a good look at all. Well, there's a few flathead about, and we're going to catch them. I reckon the wind's dropped off to 38 knots, mate. 38? Yeah, you're probably right, actually. Oh, maybe 39. I think 39. <laughs> Today's fishing and boating tip is brought to you by boatsales.com.au. Well, here we are in beautiful downtown Amsterdam. One of my favourite little lures here, the old Yozuri Jewel Sashimi broken back, just caught me a magnificent pike. But you'll notice the middle hook's missing. And you'll also notice it's now on the side of my hand. Ouch. So all I can say is please be careful when you're using treble hooks. I got so excited. It was my first pike. I couldn't help myself. I grabbed it, it lunged, and now I'm in a bit of trouble. So the boys are going back to get the bolt cutters. I'm just standing here going, ouch, Paul, you look like a dill. But no matter where you are fishing in the world, remember, treble hooks, they're dangerous. This fishing and bone tip is brought to you by boatsales.com.au and the beautiful northern pike of the Netherlands. Well, if you ever find yourself in Dandenong, Victoria, or Port Stephens, New South Wales, come along to the Australian Shark and Ray Centre, because inside that building behind me is something that is going to put some very big smiles on these two young faces. Let's go and have a look, guys. This is going to be cool, isn't it? Let's go. Is this the best fun ever? Well, how good is this? Jet and his little friend Lily are feeding the rays, the Port Jackson sharks. And unless you go fishing, it is very rare you get the opportunity to actually get up close and personal with marine creatures. So it's so good to take kids to places like this so they can interact, they just get a better understanding of these beautiful creatures and that they're not that scary at all, are they, Jetty? Now, what do you think they're going to eat? Squid or prawns? Prawns and squid. Whoa! I'll just give you a little bit of an idea how the whole system works. Very simple. Got a bit of broom handle and a peg, and the prawn goes in the back of the peg there like that. 
That's to keep my fingers away from the stingrays and the sharks and things. All I do is hold the peg over the side and you'll see I've got rays coming all over trying to feed. And the ray's mouth is actually on the bottom of his head and he just comes through and tries to suck that prawn off. And he's actually struggling to get it off because his mouth's on the bottom there. You can hear that implosion? Come on, mate. <laughs> uh, oh, excuse me. The result? Half a prawn. I think I might just give him that bit. There you go, buddy. We're going in. <laughs> and I have to say, Jane, this is a very attractive look. It isn't is, it? isn't it? It's our khaki jumpsuit. Yeah, it's very, very nice. <laughs> well, this is Jane Widdowson from the Australian Shark and Ray Centre. And how do you feel coming to work every day and getting to look at beautiful things like this gummy shark? It's a fantastic experience. It's very it's cool. wonderful coming to work today, every day. So, how long has the Australian Shark and Ray Centre been up and running? Four years we've been open. And I believe you've got a brand new Shark and Ray Centre. We today. certainly do. Uh, 41 Princess Highway, Dandenong. So that'll be opening the, probably the next month, we hope. Sensational. I'm very excited about that because it's only about 10 minutes from Tackle World Cramming. Excellent. So I'm going to be the biggest visitor. My boy Jet will be down there all the time. now. I believe in here somewhere is a very, very large stingray. Uh, she weighs a mere 300 kilograms. So she's been on a very good diet of yes. uh, mullet and fatty fish. <laughs> That's right. And can people, like we're getting in here and filming, but people at home are going to be saying, oh, surely they can only do that because they've got a TV crew here. Anyone can get in Anyone, here. Anyone, any age can do it. You can hop in in the waders, or we've also got wetsuits that you can hop into. And I'm going to ask the question that mums are thinking particularly. Is it safe for someone to get in here with 300 kilos of stingray? Of course it is. So I don't have to be scared? No, not at all. I can stop trembling? Yes. Oh, that's not very good. <laughs> so this is Respucia? Certainly is. And that is a lot of stingray. Now, is it a type of stingray? Like... Yeah, she's a black stingray. Oh, so I'll just move out of her way. And you're not concerned about that bit at all? No, not at all. It's very cool, isn't it? And Respucia is not playing because she's trying to eat our underwater camera. <laughs> Come here, darling. Here she comes. Bring now, how much how much food a day would she get? Oh, a few kilograms. Yeah. yeah. Here she comes. Certainly quite a bit. Thank you, Respicia. That is very cool. She is I've very never cool. been covered by 300 kilos no. of black ray. There we go. That is very very good. <laughs> well, it's not every day as I say you get cuddled by 300 kilos of black stingray, but there's heaps of fish there. There's some big sharks over there. Certainly is. How about you go check them it's out as fun. well? Good work. Right. Thank you, darling. Oh, one more cuddle. Yeah. One more. That is so cool. <laughs> so I assume these big yellow fish are one of your major attractions here? They certainly are. There are three-metre sharks. There are a 20-metre shark. So, obviously, people hear the word shark and they get all scared. I think it's pretty safe to say that these guys are just like big puppy dogs, aren't they? They certainly are. They're a gentle giant. And do they have a pretty sedentary type lifestyle to lay around all day? Yeah, they certainly do. Imagine the camouflage they would have on a sandy bottom. That's right, yeah. It's just insane, isn't it? So they're found up along the top coast of Australia. Yep. So from the Ningaloo Reef on the west coast up along the top coast all the way across to the east coast near Rockhampton. I'll say it quietly because I don't want them to hear. <laughs> I think I've caught quite a few of them in the past. Oh, really? Yes, but I always let them go. Good, excellent. That's what we like to hear. Yes. And now they're reading our underwater camera. <laughs> Get away from there! Get away from my camera! <laughs> well, thank you, Sasha, for showing me around. This place is just sensational. It's okay, thanks for visiting. No, it's been absolutely awesome. If you're ever in Port Stevens, do yourself a favour. Head to the Australian Shark and Race Centre, because this place, it rocks. Come on, mate. What you'd rather be doing We know what you really got in mind We know you'd rather be out fishing And today's the day you're gonna wet a line Cause every day's a good day Stop wishing Every day's a chance to drift away Drift away Every day's a good day for fishing Hook up.
shop with a local and visit one of the many Tackle World stores right across Australia. Every store is owned and operated by experts who know exactly what bait and tackle you need to catch your target species because they all fish. Drop into a Tackle World store where every day is a good day for fishing. Fortunately, yesterday is gone. Today is upon us. The sun has come up, the weather's looking better. Brent, are things going to go our way? Mate, hopefully so. We've got probably one of the best days of the week, so I'm hoping the fish are going to play ball. A bit. I reckon I've got a squid on. Oh no, it's no, a fish it's a now. <laughs> <laughs> that is weird. That is very, very strange because I was getting these really bizarre <laughs> pulses like I had a calamari on. Then I just let the old adagio sink down a little, Brent. And then I don't know what I've got here. What have we got? A little, you've got a little tailor, mate. A little tailor. And you've actually, look at that. I've pinned him pretty well. Look at that. He's not going to get off. No, he's not getting off in a hurry. And that is a tailored adagio. Oh, there he goes. Brent's famous last words. Let's replay them. He's not going to get off. No, he's not getting off in a hurry. As he said, he's not going to get off. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Brent made the mistake of mentioning that you get a few squid around here. Mate, we do in this beautiful calm bay. So it was off with the Adagio and on with the Yozuri squid jig, because one thing I always carry with me is the Yozuri squid jig, because you just never know. And I think I may have my dinner, Brent. Oh, mate, I thought you were going to donate it to me. Oh, it looks like a good sized big one, too. <laughs> oh, just beautifully done, my friend. Lift it up here. Oops, and I'll try. Look at that. Magnificent southern calamari. And see where he's hooked there? That's actually the perfect place to hook a squid. It's because I was giving it quite a vicious jerk. He's come up to eat it. The jig is actually shot back at an angle and nailed him. And that is a very, very nice squid. The tough thing's going to be getting it past these boys. And I reckon they might want to use it for bait. Pass towards that rock there, mate. Forward. Good call. <laughs> you can see I'm grunting it. Oh, Are you grunting? Oh. Oh. And they just fight well above their weight. Oh, what a beautiful fish. Well done, mate. I'm going to grab the net, I think. <laughs> um, I was going to say, that's a big pig now. <laughs> it's not a bad one. You can just grab the net for me, my friend. I will. That, oh, and the bait just fell out beautifully there. Look at this for a fish. And we're talking about pigs, and people may be confused, but that is what we call a pig. It's a drummer. It lives around the rocks. Vegetarian or not? Mate, vegetarian, although we're catching them on prawns. Yes. So, and kanji. So they're a vegetarian that likes to dine out occasionally. Exactly right. Well, we've just driven away from the rocks. And we're just about to release this beautiful drummer. And the reason I've come out to deeper water is so I don't spook the other fish. For the latest fishing info, head to ifishtv.com.au or follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash ifishtv. For the latest clips, head to youtube.com forward slash ifishtv and follow us daily on Facebook at ifishwood tackle world. Remember, subscribe to ifishtv.com.au and I'll send you an email every week with what's coming up on the show. Well, you may notice a little bit of change in the background. The scenery is different to what you were seeing just before. And Brent? Do you want to explain what might have happened? <laughs> Mate, unfortunately, we just had a little bit of a nasty wave. Just hit us broadside there. 
unfortunately got a little bit of water on our sound gear. So Yes, now you can hear us because we're using the top mic on the camera, but otherwise we've been in a lot of trouble. Normally, wouldn't be a problem because you're out fishing, you wear a jacket. Exactly right, mate. Yeah. But with our very technically expensive gear, it's not a good look. So, one more question I have for you. <laughs> is there a good pub in town where I can get a palmer for lunch? Mate, that's where we're headed right now. There is a good pub in town. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs>